It is Tuesday night, which again means it is time for the Panther Pulse right here on 93.3 The River. Good evening, everybody. Justin Foster, as always, joined by Caleb Turrentine to recap Pelham Panther football. We talk all things Pelham Panther athletics as well and a lot to cover on a lot of smiles on the face again, Caleb, as 35-28, a victory over the Chelsea Hornets, 7A now, Chelsea Hornets. And uh, kind of your thoughts in, in seeing that victory and hearing it, I guess, really hearing from, what you heard, from yeah. y'all. Um, no, it was, uh, it was fun. It's kind of kind of funny that I can just like sit around uh, at, at the office and, and do my work and then just tune in in the fourth quarter because all these games, are, that's when they're being decided, another <laughs> one possession game. Uh, but it's always good to see, see uh, Pelham come out on the end, on the good end of one of these, uh, even if it was a non-region game, try to build some momentum now. Absolutely. And coming up in the show, we will talk all things PHS tennis. Coach Kevin Lasore is with us, as well as Coach Nathan Fordham, some of their players to talk all things PHS tennis. But joining us now, Coach Mike Vickery. Coach Vick, a uh, lot of smiles again. Uh, nice to get that second win, uh, 35-28. Your thoughts on the team's performance uh, after a tough emotional game against Helena come out and then get it back on the right track. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Appreciate being here. And, um, you know, I thought our kids uh, did, a, did a really nice job. You know, anytime you come off of an emotional, it doesn't matter if it's a win or a loss, it, the emotions of a, of a close game against a, you know, big time rival, um, you worry about, you know, the, the, the mindset going into that next week and, and finding that energy, finding that, um, that emotion to, to kind of push through, especially in another close game. So our kids did a great job. Our coaches had them ready to play um, on both sides, and, and uh, they handled it in a business-like fashion, Go, came out, played, played well early offensively, and, um, and, and defense, defense, you know, bend, not break. Couldn't get off the field a few times, but, um, and, uh, but made some adjustments there late, late to, to get a couple stops there, there in the fourth quarter. But, um, you know, really proud of our kids, um, you know, making just enough plays to, to come out of there with a win. And you talked about being able to jump out to a good a good lead, but you're up two touchdowns, and again it kind of goes away. But with the way games have been going for y'all, was 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 that a point? You know, you're not really thinking about those leads anymore, like we've talked before about maybe playing it a little differently, you know, tactically or something like that. Was that not the case in this one? Well, we we definitely definitely uh, slowed down a little bit, um, you know, with, with, as uh, trying to keep our defense off the field. They had they had two really long drives there to score 14 points, and. Um, you know, our, our defense had a had a pick, had our first defensive touchdown, uh, you know, which are great. The problem with defense touchdown is you better <laughs> go right back out there and play defense again. So, so you know, we, we did try to sustain a couple drives, uh, slow down just a little bit, um, you know, kind of battle the injury bug a little bit here and there. And um, so, so our, you know, definitely part of the mindset right now. We we tell our kids, and this is not this is every year, you know. It, Every time we get the ball, we want to be in scoring position at the end of the drive. So if we can get first downs um, and, and get in a position to kick a field goal or, or, or score a touchdown, usually we're going to be in pretty good shape. So we want to get points on every possession. And, and um, you know, we, we were able to do that all but all but two, um, uh, two a turnover and, and um, the, the one, one uh, punt um, there in the, in the second half. So, so, again, really good, really good, um, good win against a, a 7 eight team that's really well coached, gotten a lot better, man. They're offensively, probably the most complete offensive team that we've played to this point. So they've done a really nice job. Um, you know, they moved it up, they really moved the ball really well the week before against Thompson, and, and, um, and, and that's saying a lot against those defensive guys. So um, hats off to those, to, to Chelsea, their, that staff, and, and the job they're doing there. Offensively, the run game was as effective as it has been all year, particularly our running backs uh, in early downs. Was that a, a big focus coming into this week, or was it kind of an organic development of the game? No, it definitely was a focus. You know, we, we a non-region game midway through the year, we we, we got to find a way to run the football effectively out of, out of some normal run run game sets, uh, what we call uh, run game sets, and. Um, and so we did come in with that mindset that we wanted to establish a run um, with, with these backs, give them, give them some reps, give them some opportunities there. So um, they did a really nice job offensive line-wise. You know, I thought we, we, we executed better than we have up to this point from a run standpoint, run game standpoint. And, and, um, and, and, the, and, and the backs did a really nice job of, uh, of starting to understand some of the, some of the run schemes that we, that, that we have in place. It's just so much different than what, what they've done before and, and just – Kind of what they're looking at, where they're making their cuts, and those kind of things. So, um, uh, you know, it, it's taken some time, and, and those guys are continuing to work and continue to get better each week. And, and you saw a lot of growth last Friday. And with the run game and those long drives that you were talking about, I mean, this is a, a game that I don't think either team punted for for two quarters, right? And so, 
this is one of the, the games where I feel like you get into those scoring ranges, but a field goal isn't going to do it. Was there a point in the game where you really realized that, you know, field goals aren't going to win this game? And, I mean, it ended up being, you know, an eight-touchdown game. Well, not, not really because even even offensively, when we had the we had Chelsea in, I think we, we figured out 11, third, and fourth, and seven-plus plays that they converted throughout the, throughout the game. Um, so even though they were sustaining drives, we really felt eventually we were going to be able to get off the field and get some stops. Now, did that? They didn't punt. You never saw the punter. He's a really good player. I think, you know, re really would have liked to see him more, but um, didn't didn't see him. Again, credit to them. They, they they kept making plays when when they needed to make plays in, in some long yardage situations and, and kept those drives going. Um, but but I, you know, we really. We really felt we were in a good spot. We just had to get off the field on those long third downs, and we thought we would eventually would. Did you kind of just feel like those third downs, fourth downs that they were converting, was that more of an anomaly, or was there something to it? Uh, yeah. Because it did feel like early downs, our defense was really effective in getting them in those third and longs, fourth downs that they tried to go for it. But yeah, they, they, they uh, I think they executed. I mean, we missed a couple tackles, but but for the most part, you know what they're what they're doing offensively, they're they're you know they're really good at. It. They they hit us in, in some spots when um, caught us in a couple coverages that you know we didn't make the right checks in and that kind of stuff. And it's going to happen. And, and and when it did happen, they made the throw, they made the catch, and, and they were able to convert. So um, you know we got to improve there. It's something we we'll work on. This week and, and, and third and long situations, getting off the getting off the football field. We had them where we want them. Now we got to get off. And another close game. Mentioned it several times, but down the stretch, this is five one possession games. I think total like scoring margin is averaging just over four points. You know, spread every game. How does that help y'all down the road playing these close games over and over again? Well, it doesn't help me any. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, th I think you know you. you, you you learn, you keep learning, you, you get put in a bunch of different situations that you know, a lot of the kids haven't been in before. Um, every game's a little different. Even when they're one possession games, there's always something different that we can learn from um, down the stretch. So, you know, the more, the more close games you play, you know, at the time, does, you know, it, you, don't, you don't like, you like to win one handily. Um, but, um, but it's, you know, you're always going to, you're always going to benefit down the road when you get into, you know, that, that tough competition in those playoff atmosphere type games. And, um, and, and we've been in those. I mean, the, we've had great crowds in our, at um, the last few weeks. And Briarwood, you know, every, every, every game has been loud and been playoff kind of atmosphere already. So, so I think it, it only helps us in the, down, the, down the road. Caleb, it speaks towards the schedule that it's been played so far this year too. Yeah. Caleb mentioned uh, the big leads that we've seen. And, you know, we, we've kind of seen that in a lot of games this year. One team jumps out to a big lead and Briar, uh, Briarwood jumped out to a big lead. We were able to make up some ground and – and win that ball game. We saw it in Helena. We saw it this week. Is that just kind of something that's inherent to high school football? Do you feel like it's something with our group, the the hot streaks, maybe cold streaks, or is that just something that's I don't, true I don't to think high so. school? I think it, I think it's a testament to the to the coaches on, on the you know that that are you know we're playing against. You know, I think on both sides. I, mean, I, I think you know there there are a lot of teams out there that you jump out to a two three score lead, no matter which side you're on. That they either stop playing hard, they they kind of give up, start fighting amongst themselves. You know, and, and you and you see some some lopsided wins. In our region, you don't see it because they're really well coached football teams that are always giving great effort. They're always they're, as long as those coaches are there, they're they're gonna they're gonna co keep coaching and, and keep playing and keep competing and, and and everyone's got good enough players to make plays and. and um, so I, I think that's more of a testament to our, the, 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 those five teams that we played and, and the, the character and the coaches and the players that they have. And I have to ask about the, the kneel down play. I'm just listening to it. I didn't see what happened. I'm glad it ended with a, you know, a, a Hail Mary being knocked down so it didn't really matter. What happened on that, that kneel down play? How was it explained to you from the official standpoint? Um, well, doesn't, I won't get into officials and how it was explained. Um, you know, I, I kind of jokingly said, I, I think I was, at, when I was nine years old, I was playing uh, Tiny Might Be, I think was the level of football that I was playing, and I was a quarterback, and, and someone did that in the game, and, and um, there was a penalty call. And so when I was nine, nine years old, I learned the rule that you, you can't touch the ball center um, until the quarterback has, has also touched the ball, um, or it's become a backwards pass. So. Um, I think it's been a rule since jump passes and leather helmets and, um, you know, it was a rule then and it's a rule now. And I, I, I can't explain, um, you know, their, their, their kid, credit him. I mean, I, you know, it's not, not the kid's fault and, and he, he's playing to win and, and um, just, just 
swiped and hit hit our arm and, and ball and, and took the ball from us as we were snapping it and and um, you know we just somehow somehow that became legal for a few minutes um, on Friday night so uh, you know we control we can contr what we can con control and that's what we tell our, tell our kids is in the situation kind of out of our control did everything right there and um, you know we just gotta thank thank goodness it didn't affect the outcome I, I won't try to get you in any more trouble tonight we'll, we'll keep it thankful <laughs> answer there <laughs> Uh, we saw Darius Copeland go down in the first half. He didn't return to the game. Certainly distracted us as we're calling the game on the radio to see him on the sidelines. When you have something like that happen, is it something you address to your team? Do you try to just kind of stay in the moment of the game? How do you manage something like that? Uh, we did address it. Uh, we, we addressed it Friday night. Um, we felt it needed to. You know, I thought we lost a little bit of energy towards the end of the half. You know, and, and so, so we, we addressed it at, at halftime on Friday. And, and just, you know, you can go one or two ways. You can feel sorry for yourself, feel sorry for, you know, your teammate. Or you can, you can um, you know, take the other approach, turn it up a notch. You know, someone else steps up, next man up kind of mentality. And, and, and go out there and, and play, play inspired football you know it, you know for your teammate that's down so um, we did address it on Friday sometimes you do sometimes you don't it just kind of depends on uh, the kind of situation but I, I you know I really felt it was it was something that that was uh, that needed to be addressed on Friday um, and uh, you know I think our kids responded uh, Kamari Hollis several uh, Christian Johnson made some big catches Kamari made you know had a great game um, you know and, and you know so we, we uh, next man up situation and, and, and those kids did it. And certainly Darius had been, you know, to that point a fantastic season, but to see those other guys, you know, step up, make plays, Kamari huge, uh, Trey Corko also had a big, big catch. How big of a testament is it to the depth we have in the other playmakers? Well, listen, you know, there, there's no, no, no secrets out there. Darius Copeland is one of the, one of the best offensive players that, that I've had the opportunity to coach. So um, he, he's really, really talented. He's a really talented football player. So, um, you know, the, they got, we got other guys standing around that are really good football players as well. And, and you know, they're ready to prove that. And, and made so, they've made a huge, some huge plays already this year. Um, saw some the other night. Um, we got great depth there, uh, you know, at that position. Um, you know, you just, there's not a kid that you can really replace, but but you you can you, you know replace him with numbers, and 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 um, and, and that's what we what those kids did on Friday, and, and I expect them to keep doing. Well, the uh, evenly matched games continue again. Huge region matchup coming up this Friday against the Calera Eagles. Uh, we've seen we said it with Chelsea, but we've seen a lot of exciting games between Pelham and Calera. So. Uh, Stay tuned this season, you know, just a lot of excitement every week. I think if it, he, he'd rather not this week, not have that excitement. But, you know, I like listening to it, so he loses well, his voice every I, I lose my voice <laughs> every week. It's just, uh, you know, the lozenges stay in rotation <laughs> on Saturday. So we will uh, preview that matchup later in the show when we come back. We have four key players from the Panthers uh, to talk about the Chelsea game and to talk about the remaining schedule. That is coming up here from Zapata. You are listening to the Panther Pulse on 93.3 The River. Zapata Mexican Restaurant is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River. Zapata is a local, family-owned, and operated business. Proud to have been a part of the Pelham area for more than 20 years. They have more than 100 authentic and delicious Mexican dishes to choose from. There's something for everyone, from salads to steak fajitas to chicken fingers. They also have excellent vegetarian options and a kid-friendly menu. Zapata Mexican Restaurant, where Valleydale meets Highway 31 in Pelham. State Farm Insurance agent Joseph Chambers is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River and all things Pella. Joseph and his staff can take care of your home and auto insurance needs as well as life insurance. State Farm was recently ranked number one by J.D. Power & Associates for life insurance customer satisfaction. Joseph's office is located in the Canyon Park Office Center. His number is 205-663-3276. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Work is a part of all of us. We know that the world around us has changed, and that's why the Alabama Department of Labor is here to get you back to working hard. Work is a part of all of us. Let us help you get back to it by visiting your local career center or alabamaworks.alabama.gov. 
Funding provided by the US DOL, ETA, and Federal WIOA, an equal opportunity employer program. Auxiliary aids and services available upon request. Brought to you by this station and the Alabama Broadcasters Association. The interstate is backed up this morning due to an accident. So you don't like sitting still on the interstate. Get the free Algo traffic app. With Algo, you'll have the information you need to avoid problems on your route, to work, to home. Traffic backups, wrecks, lane closures, all with current info and live traffic camera feeds. Know before you go with Algo traffic, ALGO traffic from the Alabama Department of Transportation. Get it today and arrive on time. Sponsored by LDOT, ABA and this station. Back here at Zapata Mexican Restaurant as the Panther Pulse continues on here on 93.3 The River. Justin Foster, Caleb Turrentine, as always, bringing you all of the action. Joining us now, we have four key players for the Pelham Panthers. We start first on offense. We have Tyler Mason and Rossin Martin. Second appearance from Rossin. How are you guys doing tonight? Um, we're good. We're good. Well, I do want to talk first about the run game from Friday night. Uh, Really a breakout for our running backs. Uh, Ross and you, Markel Bell, combined for over 100 yards, got into the end zone, saw that emotion there, getting that touchdown. You know, how did it feel to kind of break out from that running back position? It felt good. I don't know how to put it into words. It just felt good. And from an offensive line standpoint, how did it feel to, you know, y'all heard the – I won't say criticism, but say, hey, we got to turn it up running the football. How did that feel for you guys? Uh, yeah, it was a good, uh, good game for us. Um, big confidence booster overall. Yeah, it was just good, good team win. And we talked a lot with Coach about those long, sustained drives. What's that like for y'all, you know, when you're out there on the field where you can just kind of having that steady drive? Does it feel like you really have control over the other team's defense? It yes, really it does. does. I like it. Yeah, good feeling, good all around. Really gets the blood going. <laughs> Now, running the ball effectively kind of opens things up. Uh, we saw a really versatile approach, a lot of guys touching the ball, making plays for the offense. You know, from y'all's vantage point, what does that do to be able to run the ball as far as opening things up for other guys? When, when we're able to run the ball, it makes the defensive coordinator and all the defensive calls go more towards the run that opens somebody else up, maybe in the flats for a throw, or maybe it'll even give us a long throw. Yes, uh, to add to that, like, Whenever we were running the ball, you know, uh, they started bringing out the outside guys, bringing them in to help in. So then we start dishing it out like to Mari, like to Kamari when he scored, other things like that. And we talked to Coach about how this was a, a plan coming into the week. I mean, for the running game to get going a little bit more. Does that help you get gain confidence going into a game like that on Friday? Uh, I like I like when he wants to run. What was, what was the practice week like for you? We run a lot. We run a lot. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of run plays, uh, just making sure we get our blocks right, everything like that, make sure hit the holes, getting ready, because we knew we had a lot of confidence going in that the run game was going to be strong. We've observed it, and we, you know, we've asked Coach about this last week, about you guys feeling a little more comfortable in the offense. It's a big change uh, from what we've done in the past. Do you guys feel that as a team, as a unit, that, hey, we're kind of gaining steam with this offense and feeling more comfortable with what we're doing? Most definitely. The more I know what – they're doing in the offense, the more comfortable I can feel. I know where I need to go before the play starts. Yes, uh, definitely more comfortable all around. Just We all know our assignment now. Not more of a – everyone's got a – no one has a question mark over their head anymore like we did the first week. Yeah, come a long way from those first couple of weeks of having those offensive struggles. Obviously looked a lot better since that, that bye week. Now you're in midseason. How much – where are your improvements? What are you looking to do now, you know, now that you're trying to take that next step? Um, I honestly just keep striving, keep getting better every week. Just ne never stop working, you know. Still can improve on everything, obviously. We're obviously never going to be to where we want to be. We just got to keep working. Yeah, I think as long as we focus on the basics of what we need to learn, we'll be good. So big win over a 7A Chelsea. I mean, to us, it's, it's just Chelsea. I mean, it, it's still weird for me to call them 7A. But a non-region game, we head back into the region. Uh, Kalira, another team that we've had some really exciting games a year ago. It goes down to the last play at the goal line. You know, where's y'all's head at as we head back into region and these games start to matter even more each week? For me, I don't care who we play. I'm playing 100%. It doesn't matter who we play. Yeah, I just got to go back to work. Got to keep going. Five one-possession games now. What's that been like? I mean, does it, does it keep y'all really focused in? I mean, y'all have had a close game every single week. Um, yeah, it definitely keeps us focused. Um, 
Sucks when they don't go our way, but also great when they do go our way. Just got to keep working. Yeah, I agree with Tyler. Is that something you feel like you, you develop the skill of playing in those close games, or do you kind of feel like it, it comes down to chance? It's, I wouldn't say it comes down to chance. It just comes down to who practices harder. That started that game that we might lo- win or lose to chance, that you say to chance, I think those are the games that we would win back in the summer. Practice for the summer was the game there. Definitely also think uh, the more close games we've been in, the more comfortable our team has gotten since – you know, since the beginning week, J.O., I feel like we were very comfortable at the end of the game. Now I feel like we're in a close game. I'm betting on us. What do you think the biggest area of improvement from that J.O. week one, or I guess technically week zero, to right now in the point of the season is? I think the biggest improvement we've had, at least for me as a running back, would, would be understanding where to go for my assignment. Some plays I might follow Tyler. Some plays I might follow Cash or Brian. So me knowing what they do before the play, makes me feel more comfortable. It's a big improvement. Yeah, I agree with that. Everyone's improved a lot. It's really hard to focus on. Just the whole offense all improved. Yeah. So so defense guys in here. Yeah, one more question though. Uh, looking at Kalira, what are you seeing defensively and, and sort of the uh, game plan with the Eagles without giving too much away? <laughs> um, you can handle that one. Also. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Uh, I see that their safeties play back. If their safeties are far back, if we beat the linebackers, that'll be a big play. All right. Well, good luck to you guys on Friday. Let's hear from the defensive guys now. We got Brody Martin. We have James Schmucker joining us. Uh, key guys to that defensive line. Guys, how we doing? Oh, we're doing good. good. Great to have you with us. And, and we'll get you know y'all's thoughts on defensive performance uh, against Chelsea. Well, I think uh, obviously we made some mistakes, but. We came back and we were able to fight and just claw our way back into that game. We made some adjustments at halftime. We came back zero to zero. Her first half cleared. We were ready to go. Absolutely. And when we talked about those long drives for the offensive standpoint for y'all, I mean, I know that can be tough on a defense. Um, even if you are, you know, subbing in and out and trying to stay fresh, what's that like? And what what kind of mentality do you have to take on drives like that? I mean. It's fun. You get to line up <laughs> several times and just go at it. I mean, uh, obviously we want to go three and out every every time, but but in reality that's just not going to happen. You're going to have those drives where you're on there for 10 to 12 plays, and it it's hard, but it's also fun. Same. <laughs> so, you know, we talked to Coach about the, the long third, you know, third and longs, fourth downs. They did a great job converting those, and Brody kind of winced there. You know, what does that do to y'all's mentality to say, hey, we get a stop here, we get off the field. Uh, you know, what goes through your mind when they do convert that? Next play, just keep playing, don't stop, have the same intensity, and just never let off the gas. Agreed. We get to line up again and, and keep going at it. Back to work. Back to work. Yep. Exactly. Can that be tough to do, especially if they are doing it over and over again? I mean, are there ch- more challenges that come with that? Oh, it is, it is tough to do. It gets it gets frustrating. But at the same time, you can't you can't get in your own head and you can't get frustrated. You gotta play the next play. Yep. When you look at Kalira, you know the name that I hear, and he's a speedster. He makes plays. You know, it was Kobe Prentice a year ago, so he didn't get as much uh, publicity. But Braylon Farrington at that receiver position certainly going to be a lot to handle for us. How do you guys take that knowing, hey, we got to get some pressure up front so this guy doesn't break free? I think we're just going to line up and give everything. Ev- everything we have is going forward. Yep. Can, can you all focus on a guy like that well, you know, from you all's position, or do you just still have to worry about your assignments up front, not, not necessarily worry whether he's coming on a sweep or anything like that? No, I think that's – you just got to focus on the quarterback, got to stop him from passing the ball. That's our, that's our job, to just put so much pressure on him that he has to run it or throw it away. In these close games, uh, Briarwood comes to mind where – Offense has a chance to drive down the field and potentially win the ball game. I know from us, from an observation standpoint, it, it's all nerves. You know, that's about as nervous as I get. Almost sick watching it happen. Do you guys feel any of that on the field, or is it just all business to get a stop? I, I think it's all business for me. Just me personally, my adrenaline gets going, and, and I'm head forward, ready to work. I mean, I don't get 
necessarily nervous, obviously a little bit, but more so ready to go than anything. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it's it's they always say, you know, we we're going back on the field. You gotta get, you gotta stop it. You know, uh, we, they might just do something. We might need to get the ball, try our hardest to win the game ourselves. But yeah. And then uh, when we went into overtime, uh, we were excited because we were on defense first. We get to line up and play more. It's, it's fun. So I, from a defensive standpoint, obviously y'all like, like to hit people. I mean, that's, that's what you go out there. You're trying to hit people. You tackle people. So I know you want to stay level-headed, but is there any time where you can channel those frustrations or, or some anger to try to you know, make yourself play better? Or can you, you just have to wipe it away completely? There is. For me personally, you, I need something in my mind. It's kind of like Bobby Boucher in the water boy. <laughs> that, that tackling fuel, you, you got to have it. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, it happened last game. I got a little bit angry, you know. So I, I had to channel that and I made some plays. Was, you got to channel it. Didn't expect that reference in a high school from high school kids. <laughs> hey, you know, they've still yeah. seen it. You know, you guys on that defensive line, I feel like this year, it feels like you've bulked up. It is a big-time strength for that defense. Y'all take pride in that, and are we going to make sure to get plenty of food here as a pot of right? <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks for joining us. Looking forward again to seeing y'all guys line up on Friday uh, for our offensive guys and defenses. Uh, thanks for joining us. And when we come back, we will switch gears. It is all PHS tennis. We start with the girls and Coach Lasore. Right after that, right after this, that is coming up right here from Zapata on 93.3 The River. You can now do more without it costing you more. Alabama's attractions have come together to offer the all-in-one ticket that downloads to your mobile device. No matter how many attractions listed on the ticket you see during the time span you bought, your price stays the same. Pick the right ticket option that best fits your schedule and then enjoy more attractions without spending more. All-in-one tickets for different areas of Alabama are available at alabama.travel and other places where online tickets are sold. Brought to you by Alabama Tourism Department, the ABA, and this station. State Farm Insurance agent Joseph Chambers is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River and all things Pella. Joseph and his staff can take care of your home and auto insurance needs as well as life insurance. State Farm was recently ranked number one by J.D. Power & Associates for life insurance customer satisfaction. Joseph's office is located in the Canyon Park Office Center. His number is 205-663-3276. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Work is a part of all of us. Working drives us to push beyond what we thought was imagined and allows us to come together again for the things that really matter. That's why the Alabama Department of Labor and the Alabama Career Center System is here to help you discover bigger opportunities than ever before. Visit your local career center or alabamaworks.alabama.gov. Funding provided by the USDOL, ETA, and Federal WIOA, an equal opportunity employer program. Auxiliary aids and services available upon request. Brought to you by this station and the Alabama Broadcasters Association. Zapata Mexican Restaurant is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River. Zapata is a local, family-owned, and operated business. Proud to have been a part of the Pelham area for more than 20 years. They have more than 100 authentic and delicious Mexican dishes to choose from. There's something for everyone, from salads to steak fajitas to chicken fingers. They also have excellent vegetarian options and a kid-friendly menu. Zapata Mexican Restaurant where Valleydale meets Highway 31 in Pelham. Back here at Zapata Mexican Restaurant, it is the Panther Pulse continuing on now with PHS Tennis. Joining us now, Coach Kevin Lasour to talk PHS Girls Tennis. And uh, Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great, doing great. And we got Emily Brainerd with you as well to That's talk true. girls tennis. So we'll start with you, Coach. Uh, you know, just talk talk a little bit about the difference between switching gears from football to tennis. What is that like, and and how do you manage it? Oh, it's it's the same. You know, <laughs> you, it, 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 there is no difference. You, you you're given a, a group of athletes, and your job as a coach is uh, try to make them better. And and uh, you know that's where that's where the uh, that's where the work comes in if you're a, if you're a coach. Period. Whether it's football, tennis, or tiddlywinks. So what's it been like, you know, so far in an off season? What does an off season look like for the tennis team? Well, they they get a lot of instruction from uh, some of our um, uh, our tennis pros that's local here at uh, the the racket club. Um, uh, 
you could Emily, you could probably chime in here <laughs> and and uh, tell them exactly what it's like. Yeah. So. I honestly just go to practice mostly eh, every day <laughs> for the week. Um, uh, coach Ryan Valentine and Joseph Boba are two of my top coaches that I go to. So. <laughs> and and how nice is that to be able to have you know the racket club here like that? I mean, obviously it's been around for a long time. I know people have used it forever, but having that relationship with the school, how important is that? No, it's, it's, it's everything. It's everything to our program. Um, and, you know, and I'm certain uh, we're going to talk about the frostbite later on when, when, when Coach Fordham gets up here, um, but, but for certain, uh, the, the marriage that we've had and we've uh, been able to experience since I've been here with the Racquet Club has been instrumental in our program's finances as well as our resources that that a place like that has I mean it's top-notch it's it's uh, one of the best in the state if not the best how big of a selling point is that when you're trying to recruit new people to the program to say hey we've got this awesome resource for you, you guys to utilize well it is it is a huge bonus and it is a huge selling factor um, it's it's uh, still a real real um, top-notch secret I think <laughs> in the community and the fact that you know our kids uh, here at Pelham uh, many of them don't grow up playing tennis uh, now that's beginning to change some of our uh, younger grades and things like that the the program is definitely headed in the right direction and again it's because of that relationship that we have with uh, Coach Boba and, and Ryan at the, at, at the Racket Club. Chaney uh, that, that, that runs the Racket Club and is responsible for it, um, she does a phenomenal job. Uh, the communications between she and, and Coach Fordham and I are top notch. Uh, we've got their 100% support and, and uh, we're, we're just really appreciative of everything that they've done for us. Well, I did want to touch on that. You said most of your kids don't grow up playing tennis, but I also know that you know, they start youth lessons over there very early sometimes, but sometimes those kids go off and play something else. I was one of them. I took some lessons at that racket club. Mm -hmm. I never <coughs> played after that, so I apologize for being part of the problem. But how do you <laughs> – I mean, how early can you really start trying to get that program built all the way down? Uh, I mean, I think Joseph has his, as young as five years old out there, uh, you know, swinging rackets, running around, and, and those kinds of things. Um, my son is, is, is just like what you said, uh, you know, part of the problem. He comes out there and he has a, he has a great time with us, you know, but, but he's playing baseball, you know, and, and that kind of thing. And so you, you, it takes, uh, I think it takes a kid till they get to the high school uh, age uh, uh, bracket for us, whether they decide what sport to play. And, uh, you know, tennis is uh, welcoming people with open arms and that kind of thing all the time. The girls really have a good time. Um, I, I, I don't know who has a better time at practice, <laughs> me or them, you know. But I love them, and, and, and they're, they're a group, great group of girls to be around. And, and really, you know, you talked about the change that you go from football to, to tennis. It, it, it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, the relationships that you have with these girls – um, you know, and, and things like that, that that's built over the years. It, it, it's really something special, and, and it's something that I cherish as a coach. So, Emily, how did you get into tennis, and what's your s sort of story to get on the team? Oh, um, so I think it started seventh grade when um, Rusty, uh, Coach Rusty first, uh, tried to introduce middle schoolers to tennis and trying to, like, just show people – because not a lot of not a lot of middle schoolers would know really a lot about tennis, and um, I think I was one of the per people who were able to like jump in and like just hit with a racket, and I loved it. And I was um, very fortunate that my dad actually knew him, so <laughs> from radio actually. Um, so it was it was just like a cool starting point, and I just slowly got into it more and more. Um, I played hockey before this, so it was a good, yeah, it was a good, it was like a more of a transitional um, sport, and I just grew to loving the action, the, um, just the athleticism of tennis, and 
now I'm here. <laughs> I have so many follow-up questions with the hockey. I don't even know where to begin, oh. so I'm just going to move past it. before. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me interject there. Uh, you know, she did say athleticism, and it, uh, this is a little girl that has a lot of it. Uh, she's been blessed with a, a great deal of athleticism and uh, her efforts and everything else that, has, that we've seen over the years as she's getting to her senior year, which is kind of crazy, you know. Uh, but... Uh, uh, she's uh, she's exactly right. It's the it's the camaraderie and it's the athleticism that you see and the competition that you see within the girls that that really makes this a lot a lot um, uh, really special. So what what is this group looking like? Uh, are there still tryouts and stuff to come? How does that all work out? And what's the process there? Okay, back to that transition between football and <laughs> tennis. As soon as the football is over with, typically uh, Coach Fordham and I take a, a week or so. We breathe a little bit, and then uh, typically uh, sometime during December we'll we'll have a tryout. It, it, it'll be uh, late November or December one where we'll have a tryout and and. Uh, the girls will come up there, and we we do nothing but play play matches, and uh, we find out who the who the best girls are, and and, and we go from there. So I want to ask about specifically getting players to maybe watch or pay attention to tennis, you know, in the tennis world. Is that something that you encourage, maybe learn about the game? I mean, obviously right now we've had so many tennis headlines with, you know, the Federer retiring, <coughs> Tiafo in the U.S. Open final. Is that something you encourage them to do? Absolutely. Uh, that is the part of the game that is that I place on them. That's their responsibility. Um, as 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 a, a dad of two and and a teacher and a coach and everything else, there's there's very little of that stuff that I have time for. That's on the that's on the students themselves, um, and I and I learn from them, you know, um, uh, and and what's going on in the tennis world today. Is it too early to talk team goals? Do you know kind of who you got coming back or maybe some individual goals? You know, Emily, speaking of individual goals, we'll let one of my <laughs> senior individuals speak on that. Um, I know there's definitely some uh, freshmen coming in that are – that I've known that are really good. Allison Peeper is one of them. She's been playing for a long time now, and I think she'll be definitely one of our top players just as a freshman. And all of our re recent players that have been practicing during uh, summer and school, I think they'll definitely be improved and just ready to play, and I'm very excited to see all of that. <laughs> And now we talked to him, he's dealing with football. What do you consider your responsibilities to the team when coaches are out, you know, maybe a little bit busier right now? What do you try to do to build up the team? Well, I'd, I'd like to hopefully be seen more as a role model like I've seen seniors when I was in middle school and a freshman. I've really looked up to all these seniors and I really would like to be seen as one. I'd like to be able to hype up the team if I'm able to put in some uh, enthusiasm and, and just joy in the sport that I really enjoy and I hope all these other girls and boys also enjoy. So, Is it easier to recruit for tennis than it was for hockey? <laughs> <laughs> I had to have one, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe, I don't know because there was a lot, actually a lot of people, lots of boys who played hockey um, when I played and Honestly, there's been a lot of people who have, who've dropped out of tennis. It's like insane. Like there's so many people who played during my middle school years and now it's just like <laughs> So I don't yeah, a little easier, a little uh harder, I mean. <laughs> so time to get them back in. So how yeah. can how can the community uh support what you guys are doing? Uh, well, number one, just uh come out to the to the events that we have. Um you know, we're, we're going to be, uh, again, hosting the prob what is quickly becoming uh, the state's premier uh, tennis tournament. You know, uh, uh, the Frostbite is, is going to be in its fifth year this year, um, and, and I'm going to let Coach Fordham talk more about that day and, uh, when he gets up. But, um, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're playing some really good teams in our region this year, or, or excuse me, our uh, section. And uh, you know Mountain Brook and the rest of them, and, and, and it's going to be it's going to be something to to behold. 
Uh, if you come out and watch tennis, you're going to see some good tennis this year. I'm glad you corrected it to section because Caleb would have corrected you I was on top of that. Otherwise. I was ready. <laughs> he, was about, he was ready to <laughs> pounce. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. We will switch gears to boys tennis with Coach Fordham right after this. You are listening to the Panther Pulse on 93.3 The River. Zapata Mexican Restaurant is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River. Zapata is a local, family-owned, and operated business. Proud to have been a part of the Pelham area for more than 20 years. They have more than 100 authentic and delicious Mexican dishes to choose from. There's something for everyone, from salads to steak fajitas to chicken fingers. They also have excellent vegetarian options and a kid-friendly menu. Zapata Mexican Restaurant, where Valleydale meets Highway 31 in Pelham. The Army National Guard is committed to keeping the country safe and our community secure. Composed of hundreds of thousands of citizen soldiers from all walks of life, the Guard is always ready to respond to local or national emergencies. We protect the homeland. We're always there when called upon. And in every state and territory, we stand guard for our communities. To learn more, log on to NationalGuard.com. Sponsored by the Alabama Army National Guard. Aired by the Alabama Broadcasters Association and this station. The skills you can develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you an edge in the high-tech job market of tomorrow. The Guard offers career training to take advantage of your skills in science, technology, engineering, and math that can help give you a leg up to a high-paying and rewarding STEM profession. Get a head start on your career while earning money to pay for college. Log on to NationalGuard.com to learn about all of the STEM career opportunities in the Army National Guard. Sponsored by the Alabama Army National Guard. Aired by the Alabama Broadcasters Association and this station. State Farm Insurance agent Joseph Chambers is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River and all things Pella. Joseph and his staff can take care of your home and auto insurance needs as well as life insurance. State Farm was recently ranked number one by J.D. Power & Associates for life insurance customer satisfaction. Joseph's office is located in the Canyon Park Office Center. His number is 205-663-3276. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back here from Zapata Mexican Restaurant, it is the Panther Pulse each and every Tuesday night during football season for the Pelham Panthers. We switch gears from girls tennis to boys tennis, joined now by Coach Nathan Fordham as well as a couple of his guys. How are we doing tonight, Coach? Doing good. How about yourself? Doing great. Doing great. And we'll jump right in, and I do want to talk all things Frostbite Invitational. Uh, just tell the folks a little bit about the tournament, how it began, and how it's grown over the last few years. Uh, well, the frostbite was uh, something that uh, me and Coach Lasuri uh, kind of collaborated on at the start when I got here uh, back in 2018. Uh, that first year, we just you know, started sending out a bunch of invitations and, and trying to get people here. Uh, you know, that, that year, we were able to get, I think it was 14 teams uh, that, that came, and most of them were local. Uh, but since then, from the second year on, it's got to a point now where um, we don't have to send invitations. Uh, people come, and they come from all over the state. Uh, and, and most of, of the teams that qualify for the state tournament at the end of the season start off their tennis seasons with us at the Frostbite at the Racquet Club opening weekend. What's that been like you know, seeing the growth for something that was original? Like, obviously, it's, it's cool to see things grow, but – to have it be your idea and you know, an original idea here in Pelham, what's that been like to watch? Uh, it's, it's been amazing to see uh, the popularity uh, of the tournament. And, you know, like I said, the first couple of years, it was, you know, fighting and clawing, trying to get people to come. And then the from the third year on, we've I haven't had to work uh, this with, with getting people to come. It's been uh, – the tournament's been booked since October or September, October. Uh, always for the last for the last three or four years, um, as soon as people leave, they say, "Hey, you know, put us down for next year. We'll be back." Uh, and, and typically, most of those teams come back. We've had several that have been with us uh, from the from the beginning that, that continue to come. We get people from the beach. We get people from the Montgomery area, uh, from the Wiregrass. We get uh, northeast, northwest hunts a couple of teams from Huntsville. So it's it's really a, a statewide tournament. And, and to be able to survive the, the, the COVID years, obviously, when mm -hmm. things are new that early, you know, I know it, 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 those couple of years killed yeah. off a, some new events. What was that like? How did y'all make sure it stayed around? Well, we, um, when we came back um, in the, what would have, was our 21 season uh, dealing with COVID, um, we still had a full tournament. Um, we, we followed the, 
you know, the state's guidelines and protocols and, you know, the racket club had some things with being a part of the city of Pelham that, that we had to do with some extra stuff about indoor things and, and stuff like that. But um, it really didn't suffer at all. It, didn't, it never really checked up. We kept right on running. What is it about the tournament that you think appeals to people and keeps people coming back? Uh, number one, uh, Cheney Mills and the staff at the, at the Pelham Racket Club do a tremendous job of maintaining uh, that facility. It's a grade A facility. It's, it's one of the, the nicest tennis facilities in the state, uh, one of the largest clay court facilities in the state. And so playing on clay, I think, attracts a lot of people and, and just the venue itself. Um, and, and then just the quality of competition that you're going to get early in the season from the first weekend on. Uh, and get a lot of a lot of reps and a lot of matches against high quality opponents. You really get a measure of where your team is, uh, and then the fact that we limit it to a 16 team field um, on on both sides. We have 16 girls teams, 16 16 boys teams. Uh, I think that makes it exclusive, and uh, you know people want to get into something that's exclusive, and and so I think that's been the big big selling point. It's called frostbite. I it know is. that's that can be uh, unpredictable weather in Alabama mm-hmm. even early in the season. How hot has it been during this frostbite tournament? <laughs> um, well, we haven't had a whole lot of warm weather. Um, last year, we actually lost a few of the courts early because uh, they frosted over yeah. and then started thawing out. Um, so it was it was pretty cold last year. But uh, you know, it, it typically it's okay. Um, you know, what January weather for us is you never know. It, it could be <laughs> sixty five yeah. and, and sunny, or it could be you know thirty degrees and raining. So how can people come out and support? Do we have the dates firmed up for that yet? And is it open to the public to just come watch? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the great thing about tennis, you can come support us for free. Uh, there's no, no ticket, no gate charge uh, to come out and watch us uh, play tennis. Uh, we play, you know, the racket club is the Frostbite. That's going to be January 27th and 28th. Uh, we'll start playing at like 1 o'clock on that Friday, and we'll play all day and into the night, uh, Saturday night. Um, but most of our matches are at the, uh, at the Pelham Tennis Center, which is uh, over by Pelham Park Middle School. You know, right there by the road, if you see us out there playing, uh, stop on in and, and check us out. So we, I, I know there's a lot of, you know, still stuff up in the air as far as the team and stuff on the girls' side. What about from the guys' side? We, get, we have Austin Lee here, Jack Shaw as well, um, and we'll hear from them. But, you know, from your vantage point, what are you seeing with this team? Well, these two guys uh, are actually the first two seniors uh, that I've had and have played for us uh, for four years. Uh, the last two seniors were the 2020, the COVID year that got shut down, so we didn't get to finish that season um, and haven't had a senior since then. So these two guys have been in the program um, since I've been here and been uh, doing a great job for us. Uh, these are our, our one and two seed uh, players. We've got uh, some young players coming up behind them. We had a, an eighth grader uh, and a seventh grader starting for us uh, last year. So this year, I feel like we got a couple seniors that uh, that eighth grader is now a freshman who will have uh, a lot of experience having played high school tennis as well as the, the seventh grader coming up. And then we got a couple other spots that, that we'll solidify with, you know, possibly some new faces or uh, some other, the younger guys that are on the team. How much does that lineup usually change, you know, in those first couple of weeks leading up to the season and the first weeks of the season? Um, usually not much, uh, at least not the singles side of it. The doubles can change a little bit, trying to find, uh, you know, partners that work well together and, uh, and mesh and have a, a decent relationship. Um, you know, so the, the pairings of the doubles can change up a little bit. But as far as the single seeds, it pretty much, uh, you know, starts out and, and finishes the way it, the way it begins. Well, let's hear from these guys, Austin Lee, Jack Shaw, as we uh, pass the headset over to Jack. How we go- how we doing tonight, guys? Oh, I'm doing good. How about you? Doing great, doing great. Now, uh, just talk a little bit about, you know, sort of your progression in the program. You know, y'all have been playing tennis for a while. Um, what appeals to you about the sport, and how do you feel you've grown over these years? I think I've grown pretty much. Freshman year didn't really start at all, but now I'm one seed for Pelham, so that's a <laughs> lot of progression right there. Um, what appeals to me pretty much is just, I just enjoy it, like the running and just like proving you can just beat people. That's what really makes it fun for me. Going off pretty much what Jack said, like starting freshman year, like there was like a challenge being expected more from you. But like as the years progress, like the challenge is even more like you want to go to state and continue to progress. 
So how do you balance those individual goals with also trying to push the rest of the team and trying to have a good team, you know, total tournament and good season for the team? Um, you just got to hold everyone accountable, you know, push them to be the best that you can be as long as pushing yourself too. So. Like everyone has a responsibility, like everyone wants to win, but like in order to get this state, everyone needs to win to count. And, and just to, you know, piggyback off of that, what's it like when maybe your match is done and you're just sitting on the, on the side now getting to watch teammates? What's that environment like? Oh, I think it's fun. I love cheering on my teammates, loving them play, loving them watch, and just watching them. Yeah, just cheering them on and encouraging them to do their best. What's kind of y'all's off-season practice schedule? Do y'all get a lot of work in? Uh, what's that look like for you guys? Mm, my off-season, my tennis is all year round, so I practice about four times a week, try to play tournaments at least twice a month. So I'm always on the grind pretty much. Just as much practice as possible. Just like taking a month off at the right before the season starts and then like a week or two right before like to start back with clinics and stuff with Ryan Valentine and then Joseph. So what's are, are you all tennis fans too? Do you all actually go and watch? What's it? Do you, do you build your game off of anybody in particular? No. No. <laughs> no, pretty much. It's like you find something that works for you and you stay with it. So what are the what are you guys' individual goals for this year? What do you want your legacy to be when you leave PHS? You guys. Is, where's this guy from? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I just want to beat everyone for real. That's about all. And just, like, be seen as someone you can look up to and aspire to be, I guess. Just make one last great run and hope for the best. Well said. Well, guys, appreciate you joining us and uh, looking forward to uh, getting things started in that Frostbite Invitational. When we come back, we will wrap things up. We will preview Friday's matchup with the Kalira Eagles. Coach Vic joins us right after this. You are listening to the Panther Pulse on 93.3 The River. Coach Nick Saban. Helping children is very important to Miss Terry and me. As parents, it saddens us to know that there are more than 5,000 children in foster care in Alabama. These children need loving, nurturing families to care for them. We ask you to join the team and become champions for children by opening your heart, opening your home, and becoming a foster or adoptive parent. For more information, call 1-866-4AL-KIDS. Sponsored by the Alabama Department of Human Resources, Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. If you're experiencing a temporary financial hardship and are struggling to pay your mortgage, we may be able to help you keep your home. Hardest Hit Alabama is a federally funded foreclosure prevention program. If you qualify, Hardest Hit Alabama can pay your mortgage payments on your behalf or provide other forms of assistance. We've helped thousands of Alabama homeowners, and we may be able to help you. Visit HardestHitAlabama.com to learn more. Brought to you by Hardest Hit Alabama, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. Zapata Mexican Restaurant is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River. Zapata is a local, family-owned, and operated business. Proud to have been a part of the Pelham area for more than 20 years. They have more than 100 authentic and delicious Mexican dishes to choose from. There's something for everyone, from salads to steak fajitas to chicken fingers. They also have excellent vegetarian options and a kid-friendly menu. Zapata Mexican Restaurant, where Valleydale meets Highway 31 in Pelham. State Farm Insurance agent Joseph Chambers is a proud supporter of 93.3 The River and all things Pella. Joseph and his staff can take care of your home and auto insurance needs as well as life insurance. State Farm was recently ranked number one by J.D. Power & Associates for life insurance customer satisfaction. Joseph's office is located in the Canyon Park Office Center. His number is 205-663-3276. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back here from Zapata Mexican Restaurant, just about to wrap things up here on tonight's Panther Pulse. Do want to take time to thank our sponsors, of course, Zapata Mexican Restaurant, as well as Joseph Chambers, State Farm Insurance agent. Saw Joseph here. I don't know if he's still here with his family, but always good to see Joseph. And uh, thank them for all they do for Pelham Panther Athletics. We certainly appreciate that. Joining us now again is Coach Vic and. Coach, a uh, big-time matchup on Friday, one that will go a long way in deciding 
uh, how things shake out in region field. Do you feel an extra sense of urgency with this one from your guys and, and sort of the energy around this game? Well, yeah, I, I, every region game is huge. And, and this year more, um, you know, there's, there's no weeks off. There. Everyone's, you know, talented. Um, and, and our kids understand that, and they go, they go to work every day, uh, you know, with the mindset to win the, win the next one. And, and um, you know, Calera, Calera brings a um, really athletic team um, to Friday night. That, that's coming off a really big win, um, a bye week. But their, their last time they played, a really big win against Chilton County. And um, they're, playing, they're playing some good football right now. So, um, you know, un unfortunately, um, you know, Coach Causey and then the schedule and then, you know blame, blaming blaming him. There, there's no there's no off weeks, no no cupcakes on, on, on this schedule. And, and I think he knew something when he made that made that schedule. <laughs> but um, you know, but it, it's fun. It, it's it's fun. It, it, you got to prepare. You got to play good teams, good coaches, and, and um, that's what it's all about. And with them coming off of that bye week now, I know you could have an advantage with with maybe being a little bit more fresh, but also mid-season they could have wrinkles in there that you haven't seen yet is that something that you just have to live with or can you prepare for it a little bit well yeah I, I think you have to live with it I mean you know obviously everyone approaches those bye weeks a little differently and especially when they're in the middle of the year you, you spend a lot of time recovering you know after after you know some tough tough battles um, early on and um, but but you know they'll come out with some, with a, a, some plans some wrink of, of some wrinkles that we haven't seen before and and you know, they got they got some guys uh, that that can really run and and um, on the offensive side and defensive side. So um, you know we got to be prepared for everything. And, and they're really they're playing so much better right now offensively um, than they were early. And and we just gotta we gotta go out and get some stops and and, and um, try to be balanced in what we do offensively. When you look at the film and you see how they want to play, you know what are kind of the keys of what we need to do in this matchup. Well, they've they've made a bunch of big plays and, and um, offensively, and and you know they, they've they've kind of lived on big plays. Um, you got some wideouts that can that can outrun anybody in our region, and and, um, and you know we got, we got to limit the big big plays. They, they're really good in special teams. They had some a uh, couple of touchdowns, one call back uh, a couple weeks ago, and, and a couple of touchdowns already on kickoff return. And so so they got some guys back there you don't want to kick to, and and um, and then you know defensively. Uh, so some really good a athletic players on the back end, linebackers that can really run. So, um, you know, we got to go out and be able to sustain, kind of build on what we did last week, be able to run the football, keep their offense off the field a little bit, as, you know, and, and be able to put some long drives together. Um, off, and, and, again, defensively we're focused on just getting off the field when we have the opportunity on third and fourth down. So, um, you know, uh, it's like every week you got to be able to run it, got to be able to tackle, got to be able to get off the field and, and um, you know, and go play a really good football team certainly feels like our team from first game to now is a different ball team. Um, when you look at Calera early games, they really struggled to score the ball. Last couple games, they're lighting it up. I mean, how do you kind of balance looking at a team's early in the season to where they are in midseason when you face them? And how do you prepare for for the team based on those different results? Well, I think you have to go, you have to look at most recent results. And, and every team grows, every team find, goes through that phase. Uh, of trying to find their identity, especially early. Um, you know, they have a second-year coach um, who, who's doing a re really nice job with that program, and and you know, it, and you're always just like just like us early on in the season. We, we really had to find some 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 key spots, some you know, an identity, but also just players have them in different situations, and and they were no different. I mean, they they um, you know they, they played some good football good football teams early as well. So. Um, you know, you, you had to go by most recent, and, and you know, right now their personnel is, really, you know, they're really talented, some really talented players. So um, I expect them to come out, play fast. Uh, you know, again, they they look for the big play, and, and we gotta we gotta defend against that. Try to get them behind the chains a little bit, and and um, you know, uh, so we can get a little bit of pressure pressure on, on on the quarterback. They got two really good running backs, big physical kids that um, like to pound it, and, and so so we gotta get them out of that. You know, get them behind the chains and and and, uh, and kind of make them one-dimensional is, is, is our goal. And um, and again, try to try to limit those big plays that they they've, they've had these last few weeks. And being you know trying to make them be one-dimensional, they have a kid who can be on any dimension. I know he's gotten the ball in several different ways. Um, I know you referred to Kobe Prentice earlier, and now it's Brailing Farrington, kind of a different player, but he gets it done in a bunch of different ways and he, that's I feel like that was their biggest difference in the first three weeks and those last two can you have a plan to, to limit him at all well you, you know we will have a plan and whether or not those plans work <laughs> or not you know you, you you know kids that can 
that can run like he can run. I mean, you, you, you try to um, try to keep the ball out of his hand as much as possible. Now, obviously, um, you know, they've got good coaches over there too, so they're, they're going to find ways to get him, get him the football in, in, um, in some different spots. And, and you know, again, we, you, you just have to be able to contain and make sure you don't give up the, the big one. And, and if you can keep him in front, which is hard to do, um, you know, you got a chance. And, and, but, but you're not going to – there's not many people out there that's going to catch him if he, if he gets behind you. So um, you've got to keep him in front. Contain what it what it, but you, it's hard to hard to stop guys like that. They're going to make some plays, and, and um, you know we have to answer offensively when they do. Well, and I think one thing with him is that when you, again talking about Kobe Prentice is that Kobe Prentice was making plays and they weren't necessarily winning games. Can you still feel like you can give up certain things to this kid as long as you're not making you know mistakes where across the field? Well, I mean you, you can't. Guys with speed, I mean, you, you can't take it all away. So I, I think it's important that, you know, you're going you're gonna to get – he's going to get touches. He's going to get um, – he, he's going to catch the football, you know, some, some jet sweeps, some different things. And you just got to – you got to make sure you tackle him, you know, keep you know keep as many people eyes on him as possible and him in front of you. I, I, you know, um, and, and, and that's the biggest thing. I mean, you, you – um, the hard part to that is they've got other guys around him that are making plays as well. So, so he he's able to get some one-on-one matchups because they got some running backs that are making plays. And and, um, and so you know we'll have a plan for it again. Try to try to tackle him when we have a have him uh, a chance. And and, um, and and again try to keep him keep him in front and not not behind us. As we kind of reach the midpoint of the season, do you feel like our team has a firm identity? Uh, to this point, and would you like to refine that at all uh, with the second half upcoming? Well, we're all constantly working. I mean, th- th- that's kind of an ever-evolving thing. No matter really how good you are, I mean, we're, we're you know, we have a, a, a system that we that we have offensively, um, especially, and um, that it is always built around the same things. And, and there now, there's some we, you saw us in a little bit more empty and four wide stuff than probably we have been in the past, and. Um, you know, our identity, we feel, can, can vary week to week. Some new weeks we can come out and, and we've got to be able to run the football. Some weeks we've got to get the ball out, uh, put the you know, quarterback in a situation where we have a lighter box where we can get some Q run stuff. And um, so we, th- that identity may change week to week a little bit, but, uh, but the premise always stays the same. You know, we, we're going to try to run gap scheme, run stuff, um, and uh, and be a physical be physical up front, and that's where we've really improved over the last few weeks, um, especially last week with getting some physical runs. Um, defensively, you know, um, we've given up a couple some big plays up until last week. Last week it was more of uh, you know some them driving the football, and we haven't had people finish drives like the, like they have they did the other night. And um, so we, again. Um, our identity is, is going to be aggressive defensively. We've been in a lot of man zero coverage and, 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 and have survived there. And, and, and we gotta, we got to continue to get it after the quarterback. And now we talk about being in the midseason. A lot of teams have six games under their belts. You only have five, and you only had two region games under your belts. You got, this is the first time you're about to play a, a you know, lengthy schedule where it's four straight region games. Can you address that as almost like a whole new season? It really has been. I mean, we talked about that. I mean, it, it's this is this is the toughest. It doesn't matter who you play. When you play back-to-back weeks like this in region play, um, you know it, it, it's not it's not easy. And and, it's, and again, the teams that we're playing, we got to play really good football to to um, be in those football games. So, um, you know, it, it, it comes down to managing you know managing our our athletes from a, their bodies standpoint. You know, the you know as they get beat up a little bit more and more each week. Um, next week we play on a Thursday so we have one few one less day to to prepare there and, and to get our bodies back so so we have to kind of play with our practice schedule play with some th- certain things to make sure that we are as uh, as healthy as we can be on Friday night when, when we play these games certainly looking forward to it again that is this Friday night against the Calera Eagles at Calera you can listen to it right here on 93.3 the river coach appreciate it as always Been always a great show. always awesome to be here thank you to uh, Joseph and, and Zabatis are doing a great job. You beat hey, me too. You already got to eat yeah, Hey, you so. got the sponsors. And sometimes, uh, you know, I get too excited and, and don't mention it. But, again, yes, thank you to Zapata and Joseph Chambers as well, all of their support and everything they do for Pelham Panther Athletics. That will do us do it for us here tonight on the Panther Pulse. Again, want to thank our guest, Coach Fordham, Coach Lesore, all of their players, all our football players for coming by. 
uh, Coach Vic as well, and everybody for tuning in. Caleb, it's been a good one. It's been fun. I can't wait for Friday. I know you got a concert to get to, so. Hey, I'm not getting jittery over here. Can there you tell? You go. <laughs> you know. uh, that will do it again. Thank you for tuning in. Again, tune in Friday night to listen to us right here. It is Pelham. It is Calera. It is a big-time Region 3 matchup. That will do it uh, for all of us here, for Caleb, for Braden George, our engineer. I am Justin Foster. Good night, and as always, go Panthers.